Enchanted Tiki Talk is brought to you by Kingdom Strollers. Our premium stroller and crib rentals are delivered straight to your Disney or Orlando area resort. It couldn't be easier. Book yours at KingdomStrollers.com. And Mouse Pros. Let our travel specialists plan your next vacation. Our concierge level service gives you the perfect hassle-free vacation. Get your free quote from Sean or any of our magical agents at MousePros.com. And now, it's show time! Your attention, please. One show for you to see. One for you and everyone. Oh, look at all the people. Pay attention, it's show time. I am always ready, as you say, to put on the show. My goodness, you're all staring at us. We better start the show rolling. Wait, wait. We forgot to wake up the glee club. Aloha, come to the Tiki Room. Get your expialidocious tickets right here. Hello and welcome to Enchanted Tiki Talk. This week, Keith is not available to talk, so I brought in a good friend of mine who lives across the pond in a land far, far away, and that's David. What's going on, David? Hey, how are we doing? I'm good. You okay? I'm doing good. I'm doing pretty good. Weather's nice. Can't complain. Yeah, we've just had a Easter bank holiday over here, and the weather was absolutely beautiful, but it's uh, now gone back to rain, so, you know, back of to course. Good, old, good old British weather. Yeah, yeah. I know. I remember being there in the middle of the summer, and I think the sun came out like five minutes in a week. So, <laughs> well, that that was it. You saw summer, so uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do, yeah. what I want to do with you is I want to do some uh, before we start the episode. I want to start some Disney movie trivia and see if you can figure any of these out. All right. Well, on the spot. Okay. Yep. Which is not a Disney prince? Prince Naveen or Prince George? Prince George? Yeah. We have, we have a Prince George. You do have a Prince George. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what does the enchanted cake in Brave turn Merida's mother into? Oh, do you know what? I've only seen Brave once, and that was a little while ago. And that's more than me. Yeah, really. So if I asked you this question, would you know? No. <laughs> uh, what is she? Let me get. What does she turn into? I have no idea. I know that bears are involved. A bear. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that was just, that was just a guess. <laughs> uh, in the Little Mermaid, what name does Ursula go by when she disguises herself and uses Ariel's voice and try to win over Prince Eric? Oh, man. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure. I think you got me. Vanessa. Vanessa. Oh, I don't think I would have got that in there. <laughs> I would not have either. <laughs> which of these princesses is which of these princesses is not part of the Disney's official princess lineup? Elsa or Merida? Uh. Elsa. I believe it's Merida. Ooh. I reckon we'll have to Google this. <laughs> Let's see. One more for you. Okay. What U.S. city is the setting of the Princess and the Frog inspired by? Uh, is it New Orleans? That's right. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it depends. It's either New Orleans or... Or, uh, or uh, New Orleans or New Orleans. There's different ways no- of saying, saying it. Yeah, Nola. Nola. <laughs> that's another way of saying it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching a program once, um, and actually it was uh, it was Gordon Ramsay on Kitchen Nightmares actually. Oh, was and it? He, yeah, and he was called, called it New Orleans, and the guys in the restaurant were really taking the mick out of him about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those. There's our. It's like one of those cities that's got multiple multiple names. Yeah. So, all right, that's all I have for trivia. So, with that, let's take a quick break and I will send it over to Steve for the news. Hi, Steve from Disney Diary here. This is What's News. 
we will proudly present a star-studded celebration which honors the rich history and exciting future of Disney's Hollywood Studios. This week, we're going to talk about Hollywood Studios. The theme park celebrated its 30th anniversary on May 1st with a somewhat lackluster cavalcade of stars rolling down Hollywood Boulevard. Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse led the parade featuring characters found throughout the park, including Indiana Jones, Belle and the Beast, Woody and Buzz Lightyear, and The Little Mermaid. Not many characters in the park, not much of a parade. There were some announcements tied to the 30th anniversary including this special one by Hollywood Studios Vice President Phil Holmes. With the overwhelming success in Andy's Backyard, we're getting the opportunity to bring a fantastic table service restaurant, believe it or not, to Toy Story Land. As, as only Disney could do, we are going to be immersing our guests in this fantastic environment. It's going to be a kaleidoscope of toys, games, play sets, and just experiences like no other. No date was announced for the opening of the Roundup Rodeo Barbecue Restaurant. Its location will be immediately to the right as soon as you enter Toy Story Land, right before you see the Big Woody. And in celebration of the June debut of Disney and Pixar's Toy Story 4, a pop-up merchandise location will be opening soon at the exit of Toy Story Mania. This will feature a variety of products commemorating the new film. Disney also unveiled a new logo for the theme park, which emphasizes the transformation Hollywood Studios is undertaking. It has a likeness of BB-8 representing Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, Woody representing Toy Story Land, and Mickey Mouse representing the new Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, now scheduled to open in spring of 2020. And speaking of the railway, a panel gave a small presentation to the press prior to the anniversary, giving some insight into what will be the first ride-through attraction in Disney Parks history to feature Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. This is the whistle, everybody, from 1928, Steamboat Willie. Let's hear it. I'm, I'm just, you know, <laughs> so honored to be holding this. And, uh, and so uh, what's so great about it is, again, this will be the sound of, of the whistle on, on uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and it sounds something like this. Our adventure begins when we see uh, the friends, Mickey and Minnie and Goofy, all together in the first scene of the attraction, and after that, anything goes. As Sharita said, forget the rules of logic, forget the rules of physics. It's gonna be one surprise after another. That was Kevin Rafferty, Executive Creative Director of Walt Disney Imagineering. The night ended with the premiere of The Wonderful World of Animation, a new show projected onto the Chinese theater. This journey through 90 plus years of Disney and Pixar animated films includes blasts from the past and rarely seen characters as well as new favorites and classic stories. Each night, the show will lead into the popular Star Wars, A Galactic Spectacular. Please visit us at DisneyDiary.com for the latest news. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Disney Diary. Now, back to the Tiki 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 Hut. All right, we are back from break here, and I want to thank Steve for bringing us the news once again, so thank you, Steve. So what we're going to do this week on the show... Since David is thousands and thousands of miles away, and I'm only a little over a thousand miles away from Disney World, what we want to talk about here is things things that pop into your mind that re will automatically remind you of a Disney attraction and going to Disney World. So, like, really, what like you you'll be sitting at work, and all of a sudden. An attraction comes to mind, and it automatically brings you to Walt Disney World. And for me, one of those things, if I'm at work, it's its like I'm sitting here. There, I'm not thinking of doing the Aladdin carpet ride in Adventureland. That's never going to pop into my mind and make me think about Walt Disney World. But what does make me think about Walt Disney World is oftentimes, especially more so in the summer, I'll be walking outside and especially going to some clients of mine and I'll walk by ponds or, or water, big water fountains that you have and you get that smell of chlorine that's just enough and it'll just take me right to wanting to go on the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean ride at the Magic Kingdom in Adventureland. So that's always something that like automatically the smell automatically triggers that feeling when I'm working and I walk by water fountains outside. 
Yeah, definitely. I think smells is is one of the things is like that really does get you done it. And oh yeah. A, certainly, if a trip like something's got such a unique smell, like pirates, it, you know, you you automatically associate it with it, don't you? Yeah, they do, and because you have to, they say there's the there two things that you associate with past experience is smells and music. So both those two things can bring you back to a moment in time quicker than anything else. Yeah, I, I believe that, and it's it's funny you say that because I've I've actually got on a little list written down here, and next to most of them, I've got smell and music. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, like another one, like smell wise. I mean, you can only like if you if you get like walk past just like a, a bakery in in a town or something, you know, you just get the smell of sort of like a, like cooking donuts or something like that. It just makes you think of, I know it's not necessarily attraction, but you know, just when you walk down Main Street and you've got all them different smells going on, it sort of takes you there straight away, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I definitely feel that. It's you, it's more so first thing in the morning, I think, and more at night than I do in the middle of the day. I think sometimes in the middle of the day, it's just your senses aren't necessarily attuned to that, or maybe there's just so many people that you can't smell it all the time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. So another thing, like sometimes if I'm just sitting at my desk and all of a sudden I just have, like, I want to ride something thrilling. And in that regard, it's like, you know, cause especially like somebody who there's there's times where I'll sit at my desk all day and I won't and I, I don't barely get up and might get up to go to the bathroom I might do 2,000 steps in a full day when I'm when I don't have anything going on at work and I all of a sudden I have a, a hankering to do something exciting and one of those things for me is like rock and roller coaster just because yeah. I it's such it is such a fun attraction but what I like about it, it's in the dark, and it's just the start of that attraction. You know, you're just sitting there, and you get the countdown five, four, three, two, one, and bam, you're gone. You're taken off. It's just like it just hits you at once. It's not. It's not like you're on Everest and you get on there and it takes off and going, and you got greenery all around you, and you know the sun is out for the most part, and it takes a little time to get into it. No, not on rock and roller coaster. Man. You're just, you know, it's like full throttle right there. So I love that aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it, and like when we were, t- were talking about earlier as well, like when you've got the soundtrack that goes with it as well. Yes. You know, so you could be at work and the radio comes on and, you know, an Aerosmith song comes on and automatically you're like, you know, you're picturing yourself listening to the music whilst on the ride. And it's, I think I love the, the way it's unique like that. Yeah, I don't I know. know why more rides aren't like that, but I love it. Probably because it costs too much money. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. always curious how much you're paying. Uh, Steven Tyler and Aerosmith Smith for that. Yeah, sure, yeah. And it's um, some contract as well because it's been there a few years now. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, they're they're not getting any younger, so at some point they're going to they're going to pass on, so are they going to yeah. retheme it or are they going to pick out another band to go forward with it? Yeah, I don't know. I I know the one in um in Disneyland Paris is being uh, uh rethemed to an Iron Man uh, roller coaster. Right. So. So that kind of, they're taking the whole sort of, you know, rock and roll sort of aspect away from it completely over there. So. Right, true. But yes, um, it, yes, one of my, one of my to go to what ride says for uh, every time we go, it's sort of like, you know, we've got to do rock and roll because it's one of our favorites. Your wife does it? Yeah, 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 she loves it, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, mine, not so much. No. No, she'll do it if she has to, but it's not like one of those things where she like plans to go do it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, another one, another one for me is um, uh, is the Kilimanjaro Safari. I think it's just could it. I think it's such a uh, uh, a di- unique ride, isn't it? It's, it's so different. I don't think it's um, you can get many things like that anywhere, you know. No, you don't. And do you remember? I don't know. Do you know? Do you have you ever been on the attraction when it was uh, big red and little red when you had to go try to stop the poachers? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really do miss that aspect of that attraction because it just plus the attraction so much more. It gave more life to the attraction as opposed to just sitting there 
and experiencing the animals around you with when you had the poaching aspect of it it just felt like you were you were part of the story of it a little bit more now, I'm not it's not taking anything away from the attraction itself because like you said it mm. is pretty unique and there are times where you could see th- it's an attraction where every time you ride it is a completely different experience and there's yeah. very few attractions anywhere in the world that you could say that yeah definitely but yeah, no, I do agree. I did, I, I did like it when it had the sort of theme, you know, and um, it seemed like uh, everything was sort of what you know the bridge sort of worked a bit. I've been a, a few times and the bridge hasn't been moving, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, which is a shame, but um, yeah, I still, if you know, it still pops in the mind sometimes. You know, when I listen into different podcasts and things, they talk about the magic, you know, talk about the Animal Kingdom, and um, I always think, oh yeah, I'd like to go on that ride right now. It's just you know. Right. Oh, pretty neat. Yeah, it's it's one of the best attractions Disney really Disney has just be, before that you because of that uniqueness. So, and it's it's an uh, an attraction everybody can go on. So that just makes the attraction so much more. It's not you know there's no height requirements and it's a it's a decently long ride. It's not your typical Disney ride attraction that's done in, in under three minutes. So that's yeah. what makes that attraction so much better. Yeah, yeah. So another one for me, like, I'll be, it's, I'm at work or, or even at home and it's hot. And the first thing you think of is not to jump into a pool, but it would be riding Splash Mountain because you get a little bit of a breeze when you're on it. You get splashed with water. You get to go yeah. inside with air conditioning where it's much cooler. It's dark. And then you have the big splash at the end where, on a hot day, you don't mind getting drenched, but when it's no. not a hot day, you don't want to get drenched. <laughs> no, no. And uh, my wife would actually refuse to go on if it wasn't, uh, even if it is hot. Sometimes she's not the, uh, she's not. It's not getting wet. It's not her favorite thing, you know. That's why you have to buy those throwaway ponchos. Yeah, because you can yeah, get them yeah. here for like a dollar in, in in some of the stores here, and you just throw that into your pocket, throw it on, and then when you're done, you take it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always, always tend not to wear. I'm always thinking if you're going to go on a water ride, you you expect to get wet. So yeah, exactly, you know. <laughs> well, because like but when also, we were there in March, they had the we got we got really wet, and it wasn't that hot either. You know, it was right. warm, but it wasn't extremely hot. So I was kind of surprised. Yeah, yeah, and um, also the length for the ride as well. Yes, it's a decent length for that that ride, you know. Yeah, I, I was, it's around 15 minutes or so. So, once again, you know, it's it's a great long ride. You can just relax on, especially after a long day of walking in the parks. You get to relax for 15 minutes. Yeah, yep. And a great photo opportunity at the end as well. Yes, yep, definitely. Yeah, good all round. <clears throat> I've, um, I've got one on here that, I rem- that actually popped into my head at the weekend. We were doing a little bit of... Um, work in the garden because uh, the weather was so good and we d- it just had some music on in the background we actually had the Disneyland just a you know just a loop going on in the background and the music from Soaring came on oh and I, you know and as soon as you hear that music it, uh, it just it, I don't know it just gives you a like, little funny feeling you know that just the music I think the music is absolutely brilliant I think the music's even better than the new ride <laughs> I I would agree with you. I think the music is the star of that attraction. To be honest, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, because it's it's such feel good emotional music. You know, it's Disney's. It's probably Disney's best music for an attraction ever. Yeah, you know, or arguably it can be because there's so many great classic Disney attractions that have such incredible music. But Sora, man, you're definitely. It's definitely top three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just—I don't. It, it just kind of like straight away. It was um, you like just sort of picture yourself in like the loading bay, you know. Right. And then when you get onto the ride, and as soon as it gets going, and that, you know, you feel the breeze, don't you? You know, and it's yep. yeah, it just takes you right there. Now, do you prefer one the the original version or the new version? <sighs> um. I hear a lot of people talking about it. It's it's quite hotly debated, isn't it? It um, is. I, yeah. I do like the new version. Don't get me wrong, but I think it is it is very. I'd, would lazy be the right word in the way that they did it? 
uh, the screen. I don't know. It just, I don't know. It, it almost feels, it's like your your experience is cheapened. You know, yeah. you're not getting the full experience with it. Unless you sat, you know, dead center. Right. Yeah, because the Eiffel Tower, seeing the Eiffel Tower crooked isn't a lot of fun. No, no. And I don't like some of the cutscenes. I mean, we've talked about it before. I don't like some of the cutscenes. There's too many cutscenes. Uh, they yeah. just, it's just like it doesn't necessarily feel as natural. They're just going for like the cheap thrill aspect of it in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's still a great ride, but yeah, I can, I can see why people, you know, preferred the original for sure. Yeah. All right, so another one of mine is when you, sometimes you're just having a really relaxing day. You're sitting outside, enjoying the, the breeze, the fresh air. And what could be better than sitting outside and enjoying the fresh air, and that would be riding the TTA People Mover at the Magic Kingdom. I just love that attraction. I've talked about it many times. It's one of my favorite of all time, just because you could sit there, you could people watch, you get a bird's eye view of the Magic Kingdom. It's so relaxing. You know, it's it's a great place to just get off your feet. Sometimes you, when it's not so busy. You could stay on, you roll your fingers and ask to stay on, and they'll let you go around again. Especially yeah. And at night, at night's the best, like, especially when the fireworks are going off. You can get some awesome views of the fireworks. Yeah, yeah. Do you prefer riding it in the daytime or in the, at nighttime? Definitely at night. I mean, I'm more of a nighttime person when it comes to the parks anyway, just because I love the, the subdued atmosphere. It's... You know, you can as a as a as a couple, you know, with Sharon and I being there in March by ourselves, it walking around, especially the after hours event when it wasn't super crowded, yeah. you you feel some romance in the air at night. I don't necessarily think you can get that same feeling during the day. There's just something magical at night when you have the lights on or you know, lights dimmed a bit and it's it, nighttime just becomes more of a relaxed feeling all by itself anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it just—it almost feels like two different experiences as well. That's what I like about it. It does. Yeah, it's almost almost any outdoor attraction is completely different at night because you can look at the same thing when it comes to Big Thunder Mountain or you yeah, have yeah. Um, even Dumbo is. is I mean, you talking about an experience that. Dumbo is not the most exciting attraction in the world, but riding that at night is so much better. You get to see the water you know, that's uh, flowing, lit up, and all the different lights happening, the colors changing, the lights around you in uh, circuit, Storybook Circus. Man, it, it's just it just adds to that attraction. It pluses it. It probably you know going during the day that attraction is probably on a scale of one to ten, it's like a three or a four. But at night, yeah. man, you you up that to around a six, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the um, the Astro Orbiter as well has a little bit of that. You know, I know it hasn't got the same charm as Dumbo or you know, or the People Mover, but it's kind of uh, at night time when it's all lit up, it just looks so much more attracting to go on than it does in the day for me. It, uh, yeah, when you're walking around, it certainly does. I think that looks amazing. I will never do it again because I got sick the last time I did it, and that was like <laughs> oh, 15 really? years ago. Yeah, oh. <laughs> so I won't do it. But I, yeah, I know what you're saying. It looks so inviting from a distance, especially yeah. like if you've ever been on top of the contemporary, looking at it and spinning and spinning. You're like, wow, that looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people move has usually got a, you know pretty good wait time as well, and it you know. Yeah, it never used to be, but now there's usually a, a ten minute wait. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. What about in the um, for the like in the evening shows? Do you ever get sort of uh, reminded of anything in the evenings? You know, um, not really. I mean, when I if I'm here. In the summertime, there's always fireworks going off on the weekends. So anytime right. I see fireworks, I'm automatically thinking Disney fireworks and how much better Disney fireworks are. Yeah. You know, and, and <laughs> there's so many towns around us, especially 4th of July. And for those who don't know, 4th of July is the is a reminder to the Brits that we, we whoop them. <laughs> So <laughs> every fourth of July, Fourth of July, there's so many towns out there that have fireworks displays going on, and they have music yeah. going to it, and it's always fun to see fireworks. But when you're not getting it, it 
you know, synchronize to music, it kind of, and you're so used to Disney fireworks, it kind of becomes yeah. a drag. You just sort of end up comparing everything, don't you? You do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I say that because on, um, whilst I'm at work, um, you know, just to, to get the day by, and I used to listen to quite a bit of music and that on my phone and that, and I've actually got the, um, I've got the Fantasmic uh, soundtrack on my phone, and every now and then I'll just put it on and sort of pass 20 minutes. Um, and I know Fantasmic, you know, it gets a bit of criticism now. It's, it's, it's been around quite a while, and it, it probably does need a good update. And I get that, but for like for me and my wife, we we um, you know, it was one of the first shows we ever saw when we went to Disney for the first time, and it sort of really did like sort of light that little bit of spark, you know. And it has always been one of our favourites for that reason. Oh yeah, it's it is a great show, and one of the reasons why it makes this such a great show, it's the whole experience of being in an outdoor theater. You have the pre-show where they'll try to get the crowd going. They, you know, they'll try to do the wave. And, you know, once you go beyond that and you see the show excel, there's so much going on in front of you that you, you're taken to another place in experiencing that it's because you are in that amphitheater, you know, that changes it up quite a bit. And, like you're saying, it does definitely need a refresh, but it used to be it used to be my favorite nighttime show for years. But back in I want to say like 2008, 2007, something around that line time frame, they only were showing Fantastic like twice a week. Yeah, so yeah. it never worked into our schedule. So my love for Fantastic Jake dropped at that point because they did that. But it's I I, I can't knock anybody for liking it because it is a good show. Yeah, yeah. So I like, yeah, I sort of listen to the soundtrack, and it sort of you know, still still takes me back, and that you know, especially the end and the music at the end, you know, when yeah. the, you know, Sorcerer Mickey pops up and the music sort of slows, you know, it still gives me that sort of little feeling. I think, oh, I wish I was sort of sat there, you know, sweating, right. getting a bit, getting eaten by mosquitoes, just <laughs> you know, <laughs> enjoying the show. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that'll take me back to Disney is. When I, I have one, there's one client I have that's in, in Jersey and they're right on the water. And for some reason, it just automatically brings me back to staying at Wilderness Lodge and taking the boat over to the Magic Kingdom. I know it's not necessarily an attraction in itself, but it's just the way the water is laid out and the, they have this one dock. It just reminds me of just taking the boat over to the Magic Kingdom and how much I enjoy that part of a Disney trip when staying there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't um, experienced that too much because we, you know, we 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 tend to stay at uh, other resorts. But um, yeah, Nick, when we go back this time in September, I really do plan on sort of using the boats on a little bit more. Right. You know, to try and visit some of the other resorts. You know, just to take a break out from like the sort of Magic Kingdom and that for a little while, maybe at lunchtime or something. Yeah, you should. You should go over to the Wilderness Lodge. I know you and I have talked about it over uh, messaging, and um, guys, your point. That's a it's a good place yeah. to go. It's whether you're there at the day or you're there at night. It's still a, it's still sort of the same experience. The only difference would be is if you were to be there at night and they had the uh, water pageant going on, and that would be such a so much better experience. It's fun. But yeah. Other than that, I would definitely go over there, relax, have a bite to eat, and you know, just enjoy the the scenery and the, and the, and the quietness of of the water right there. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever rented a boat over there? Uh, no, we haven't. No. That's probably, maybe that's something you should do too. Is a, a, I think Wilderness Lodge doesn't have it anymore. I think they got I think they got rid of them, but I know yeah. that the Polynesian, the Grand Floridian, does. But you should look into renting one of the boats. Uh, I don't know. Rent it for like a half hour to an hour. It's not going to cost you more than... I want to say it's $40 for every 30 minutes, somewhere along those lines. So it's not terrible, but it's it's a it's a unique experience of you getting out onto the water and seeing the Magic Kingdom from different views and, you, and, and, and the resorts from a different view than you wouldn't normally do. Right, yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I, I didn't realize you could actually hire boats on there. Yeah. Actually. Yep. Oh, okay, I'll have a, to have a look into that. I'm not sure if uh, um, if Kearney would uh, trust me on driving a boat around the lake, but 
you know, <laughs> I can always try. Right. <laughs> you got any more? Uh, let me see. I got um, um, I do well. Actually, yeah, I actually got told just before I came on with you. Um, uh, I said to Kearney, I said, uh, I said, oh, I'm just gonna uh, go on and record a show. Is there anything that reminds you? And she she said that lifts. She said that whenever she stands in a lift, it reminds her of the Tower of Terror. Really? Yeah, which I thought was funny. I, you know, I laughed, I thought, you know, but, um, you know, I kind of get what she's saying. You yeah, know, I, I, no, I, I could see that, yeah. Because you never know. I, I always had that fear. <laughs> I always had that fear of, like, the elevators get to just drop and, you know, it's all going to end. <laughs> yeah, so I, I had to mention that she said that. She told me to. So. Oh, okay. But as... <laughs> <laughs> but as theming goes, that ride is, you know, doesn't. I'm not sure if it gets much better than that still. No, it really doesn't. I mean, there's really nothing better than the theming of that. It's top, definitely top three, probably one or two, really, really realistically. I mean, there's nothing better than that from entering the, the attraction on the grounds on the outside, walking inside, and nothing yeah. has been dusted for, for years. So it's just like they hit a, a, a home run on that many times over. Yeah, yeah. It's just even like the misting, you know, the misting yep. when you're walking through the garden and that. Yeah, it's a special ride, on. So the the last thing I'll say is that uh, it this one is not an attraction, but anytime I walk into a Starbucks, I always think to myself when I come out when I op- open the doors to leave the Starbucks, I'll be on Main <laughs> Street, and it never happens. No, <laughs> well, never. It might one time. You never know. Keep trying. I know. That's, that's why I go in there. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That it did happen. How shocked would you be? <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't. I don't think I would talk for a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would that would be pretty awesome. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've actually been in the Starbucks on Main Street. Uh, it's what's the old bakery? So. I mean, it's just I've I go to I've only probably been in there once or twice, but I've been in the one in Epcot more times than anything else. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, I you know yeah. David. I want to thank you for coming on. Why don't you tell everybody where they can find you if you'd like? Yeah, I'm just on uh, Twitter under uh, David Coppin Seven. That's all I'm on. Okay. Cool. Thank you for coming on, spending some time on the the late hour. Well, not too late, but uh, it's late enough. No, and uh, thanks for asking me on. It's, uh, You're it's been fun. I really enjoyed it. All right, so that's going to do it for this week. But first, we want to thank our sponsors, Kingdom Strollers. Get your premium stroller and crib rental at kingdomstrollers.com. Let the vacation experts at mousepros.com help plan your next perfect Disney vacation. Don't forget to check out our store at redbubble.com slash Tiki Talk Podcast. You can connect with us on social media. Find us on Facebook at Enchanted Tiki Talk, Instagram, and Twitter at Tiki Talk Podcast. You can leave us a message on the Tiki Talk hotline at 256-4MY-TIKI. That's 256-469-8454. And if you enjoy the show, please take the time and rate us on iTunes. You can find me on Twitter at One Minute Disney Dream. That's one M I N Disney Dream, MouseWorldVacations.com, and MousePros.com. You can find Keith at uh, OnlyTheLonely.com. And I want to thank Steve for uh, giving us the news. And you can check out his site at The Disney Diary. And Alan, take it away. Thanks for listening this week. For Sean and Keith, I'm Alan. And this has been Enchanted Tiki Talk. Aloha. Enchanted Tiki Talk has been brought to you by MousePros.com. Let us plan your perfect Disney vacation. And by KingdomStrollers.com for all your premium stroller and crib rental needs. For all of us here, I'm David Benter. Thanks for listening to Enchanted Tiki Talk.